Hey everyone, and welcome to our DAT IQ weekly market update. This is our update for June 3rd, 2020. I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT. I'm joined by Ned Damon, Principal Data Scientist at DAT. And we'll have a special guest on later in the video to talk about some very exciting news. And speaking of exciting, uh, how was your weekend, Ned? Well, Ken, not everybody got to go to the mountains, but uh, I had a pretty grand time. I was able to visit some friends uh, in a socially distanced and socially responsible way, of course, uh, because Oregon's opening up a little bit, and I think that's that's good news for everybody. Um, to go into the points of the week, we've got some pretty exciting stuff to talk about. Um, in general, it's just good news. Uh, load to truck ratios are on pace with prior year. We'd like it if they were a little bit higher, or it would be nice, but uh, you know, I, I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, Reefer MCI map is the hottest we've seen all year. Dry van spot rates have returned to pre-COVID levels, which is wonderful. And our forecast horizon is starting to see a little bit past the produce-driven peak, but we'll get into that and do a little bit more detail uh, when we get there. Uh, Ken, uh, you ready to talk about market dynamics? I am, Ned. Thank you. This should be a lot easier without Novocaine this week. Um, I'm going to dive right into load board activity. So we have dry vans here. And again, to echo what you said earlier, Ned, we're, we're keeping pace with 2019, which is good. This is that hockey stick period we talked about the next couple of weeks. And it's good to see that we're keeping pace um, with prior year. I'm going to flip to reefer really quick. We're seeing a bit of a slowing. I, I don't know that it's anything to be alarmed about. Um, I think next week's number, there, there's still one day of Memorial Day in the sample that we have on the screen right now. So I think next week will be more telling on whether this is a trend or just a bit of a blip in the data. Um, transitioning to dry van MCI, this is a snapshot from yesterday. And what we see is the Southeast, a little bit of the Midwest and then the, the Southern California um, into Arizona. The interesting thing to watch here is we actually have the third named storm or soon to be named uh, brewing in the Gulf of Mexico. So it'll be interesting to see how that impacts markets along the Gulf. Again, kind of the chart of the week, if you will, would be Reefer MCI, tons of shades of color, you know, Southwest, even going up into the, the, the Southern Northwest, if that makes sense, South Texas, the Southeast, and even going all the way up into the Great Lakes region, all showing signs of strength. It's really good. This is a seasonal peak. It should look like this, but I think we're in a time period where celebrating normal is a bit of a positive. Um, let's just see real quick. I'm going to go and talk about spot rate trends because a lot of this... Um, the warmth should translate into higher spot rates, right? Looking at dry vans, we're now at a point where we're above pre-COVID levels. So this, again, just to reiterate, does not include fuel. And we've seen essentially a 18 to 24 month freight cycle since March condensed into two and a half months. We saw rates shoot up, collapse back down, and have now recovered. That's not to say that there's not a long pathway to go for longer term recovery, but I do think it's a positive to see rates sitting above where they were before um, the COVID pandemic really hit the United States. Long-term, short-term view. I just want to talk real quickly here. The next couple of weeks, rates will have to keep increasing to keep pace with prior year. So that'll be something very important to watch. And then right around day 190, you start to see rates come back down um, into the dog days of summer. Looking at reefers, we've seen them slow a little bit. We've talked about how that's going to be a kind of sort of a jagged line up through produce peak. I don't know that it's anything to be alarmed about. We're just going to watch it over the next a uh, couple of days, a couple of weeks to, to ensure that we still see upward momentum. The week over week view, we show this just to kind of say rates shot up above prior year and have since flattened. But since rates were increasing last year, there's a chance, you know, we're losing ground on a year, year over year basis. I'm really excited for Ned to jump into the forecast models because we're going to start to see into that post peak period. So Ned, take it away. Absolutely. So uh, here we have what are, we call the spaghetti chart. Uh, in the blue, we have the actual spot rates uh, that were observed by DAT, or that we call actual. And then off to the right, we have our four strands of spaghetti. We have the rate cast model in green. That's our flagship model. We have a much more short-term focused model in red. And then we have a pair of blended forecasts that are uh, kind of a mixture of the short-term or the and the rate cast model in different ways and in different proportions. Um, and those are in yellow and gray. Uh, you can see here that there's broad model uh, agreement that things are gonna be up and to the right. I'm, again, I like the rate cast model. I know that last week it kind of undershot a little bit, but I feel like it's, it's giving a good peek into what's going forward. And you can see that that rate of growth is starting to slow, especially as you're heading into the, the tail end of that produce peak there. 
which is something that I think is accurately, assuming that we're going back to normal, that's what you'd expect to see. Here we can see the reefer chart. Uh, it's very similar to the uh, van forecast. Again, we've got blue, the actual spot rates observed by DAT. And then off to the right, we have our model suite. You'll notice that the rate cast model was, did a pretty good job of predicting up and to the right, but at a slow pace. Uh, last week and then going forward, I think that that's going to be accurate. You can see that it is up into the right heading into the produce peak, but it's starting to slow down, especially in the tail end, which I think is very indicative of what's likely to happen. Whereas the short term model um, is a little bit less taking into account seasonal trends, but I, I feel like we're moving back to normalcy. Um, and I think that's about it for the uh, forecast section. And we're on to our wonderful guest who I am excited to meet. Thanks, Ned, for covering the models, and I'm, I'm excited as well. Um, I want to welcome Dr. Chris Kaplis to the video this week. Uh, Chris is the chief scientist at Chain Analytics, and he's executive director at MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics and a senior research scientist at MIT. Chris will actually be coming over to DAT as part of the recently announced acquisition of FMIC from Chainalytics. Welcome, Dr. Chris Kaplis, both to our weekly video update and to DAT Solutions. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Ken. Glad to be here. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Great. Yeah, we actually just wrapped up uh, doing an episode of the Freightline podcast. So if you're not familiar with that, I'd recommend you checking it out. Um, and we had some really exciting news to share this week. Uh, Chris, you want to fill us in on that news? Yeah, sure. The, the big news that's been in the works for a couple months now is that uh, FMIC, the Freight Market Intelligence Consortium, along with the Pulse product, and our signals forecasting has been acquired by DAT. So we're now part of the big DAT solutions family. I'm just waiting to get the t-shirt, Ken. Yeah, I actually need some more swag. These are getting redundant. Um, you know, For those watching today, Chris, that aren't familiar um, with you or the Freightvine podcast, can you tell us a little bit about yourself or your career and your role at FMIC? Sure, I'm a uh, accidental um, professional in uh, transportation. I was actually a civil engineer, served time in the army, Got my PhD in transportation, worked in software for a company called logistics.com that eventually got acquired by Manhattan Associates. And so I've actually been in freight transportation for a little over 25 years, uh, mainly focused on the shipper side of things. I joined Chainalytics at the same time I went back to MIT to run the Center for Transportation and Logistics. And that's when I started the what we used to call the uh, model-based benchmarking. But then marketing took control and gave it a better name. Uh, FMIC, Freight Market Intelligence. So pretty much my career has been in working with shippers and carriers, trying to find better ways that they can work together better. Great. So for a lot of those folks, you know, FMIC customers or others, uh, can you kind of give an overview of what FMIC is? How is it different or similar to DAT? Sure. And, you know, why are we all so excited about this? Yeah. So FMIC has really strange roots. It actually started because we're trying to understand what a shipper can do to improve the, the interaction with a carrier to lower those rates. Because as we all know, truckload transportation is pretty much a cost plus business. So if you can find a way to lower the carrier's costs, you can probably lower their price and the shipper's cost. So we're looking and trying to understand how can I determine what drives a rate? And so we developed a series of models to kind of separate out the different driving factors. You can guess anyone who's watching this knows trucking. That means geography, origin, destination, distance, and a bunch of other factors, whether it's going to a grocer retail, whether it's going internal, whether it's team, all these things, and we're able to quantify it. So what FMIC is all about is understanding what drives carrier rates for the purpose of improving the relationship between shippers and carriers. So it's very different from what DAT does, but it makes for a nice, nice marriage. Yeah, that kind of brings me to my next question, which is, you know, how is the combination of FMIC and DAT going to give customers a more complete picture of the freight market? It's a great question, Ken. And there's, uh, you know, if you look at the, the transportation market, you can break it into many different pieces. But the big pieces, you can talk about shippers, carriers and brokers. And to be honest, the FMIC side is very focused on shippers and how they interact with the market. Um, and what I love about DAT, it's the opposite. It's focused on carriers and brokers and how they interact. So I think bringing it together really complements each other and will bring out strengths that the other ones haven't focused on. But what do you think, Ken? You're just as immersed in this as I have. What do you see the combination of these two companies doing? Yeah, you know, as a recent consumer of data and industry and, you know, now at DAT, I'm excited. It's a full end to end picture. There's really no reason you would need to go to any other source 
for freight analytics to get that end to end 360 degree view of what's going on. And I think combined, it's over 100, $110 billion worth of combined freight transactions that we now have under our umbrella. Yeah, so I, I can't think of any other source of uh, that has so much data from so many varied sources. And so what I think it brings is not just the the breadth, but the depth of the data there. Do you, can you think of any other source that comes close, Ken? Now, what's really exciting about this is between the two companies, we've been in freight rating and analytics for you know, over 20 years. This wasn't just a great idea over cocktails three to four years ago. We have a long history of helping customers understand, adapt, and respond to the uncertainty in freight markets. It, we don't rely on vague marketing claims about, about our data. You know, we're, we're transparent because we're proud of how the data is collected and analyzed. And I think also this acquisition speaks to how bullish we are on freight analytics in general. You know, we're we're a company that's not beholden to our next round of funding. You know, we're not out there constantly fundraising. We we are here pouring money into developing great products for our customers, and I think that's why it's such a great fit with FMIC. No, that that's an excellent point because I think one of the, the strongholds of FMIC is transparency. We are very open on what we do, where we get it, and, and steps that we take. Uh, but let me ask you a question, Ken. What do you think this will allow our FMIC customers to do that they couldn't do before? The big thing is going to be on the spot side of the equation. And you know, if you're a contract shipper, as you know, Chris, you're really focused on that contract book of business. But the spot, even though it's smaller, plays a very important role. So gaining a greater understanding of what's happening there, how it may lead future changes in their contract rates, and anticipating and reacting to those changes before they happen. Um, again, and there's this broad suite of predictive analytics and forecasting that they'll be able to gain access to. And I think it'll just round out the total um, portfolio, if you will, of analytics. But I'm really interested to hear, you know, what do you think about FMIC customers? Why should they be excited about this, you know, partnering with DAT? Right. I, I, I'm going to echo what you just said, because I, the big the big takeaway story here is that we're two big companies doing some really interesting stuff on different segments of the market with different perspectives. So getting uh, merging in with DAT will bring more real time visibility, uh, visibility into spot, which we have had limited effect for that, and a lot of more um, access to leading indicators. Um, because I think what FMIC is really good at is understanding how contracts work and how they work through the routing guide, all of those different things. What F what the DAT is bringing to us is that visibility into that real time, how things are churning in real time in those leading indicators. So I think it's going to be a lot of complementary value between the FMIC and the DAT customer bases. Yeah, for sure. You know, we've talked a lot about data and just to wrap up here, you know, besides the end to end data and the database size, I think it really does come down to people. While other folks in our industry and specifically in freight analytics are reducing their, um, you know, footprint on industry expertise and analysis, we are, I think at this point, we have created the greatest nexus of expertise, experience, both on the data analytics and, you know, data science, but also industry expertise side in the industry. And that's what's a to me, most exciting about this, I would look forward to you know really great content as we learn to collaborate, um, and I'm really excited. I think most of all to see you know what we're building together 12 months down the road and, and how how we're able to change the landscape of freight analytics. So I want to thank you, Chris, for joining us. Uh, this certainly won't be the last time that you're on, um, and I think I speak for everyone at DAT when I say welcome to the entire FMIC FMIC team, and we're extremely excited to have you guys um, part part of the team. Great. I'm excited to be here, Ken, as for speaking on behalf of the whole team. Uh, we're very excited to get started and, and rolling our sleeves up as soon as we get our T-shirts. We need some swag. We're a golf forward company, so it's going to be polos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Thanks, Ken. And again, I want to thank Chris for joining us. Uh, Ned, what did you think about that? I mean, I'm really excited. Uh, I feel like, just as he said, we've got kind of two different perspectives on the overall freight market where we're more spot focused and they're more contract focused. And, you know, if you put that chocolate in that peanut butter, you get uh, something that's pretty, pretty dang good. Having the addition of somebody who is much more contract focused and has um, kind of a different source of the data is going to be able to give us a much more complete picture of the freight market. And uh, that I think is going to be really helpful for our ability to um, build all kinds of interesting products, not just um, improving the ones we have, but also um, maybe some new stuff that we couldn't do before. Um, also, you know, it's it's fun to, to 
in a single swoop, double the number of PhDs at uh, uh, DAT. So I think that that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, Ned, I'm really excited as well. I, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be a really great partnership. Um, to wrap things up this week, I want to thank everyone for joining, thank our guest, and uh, run through some housekeeping. So DAT.com slash COVID-19 for our traditional updates. If you prefer to have more kind of uh, questions answered or personal contact, you can also email us questions, comments, concerns, and burns at ASKIQ at DAT.com. That's ASKIQ at DAT.com. Love to hear from folks. And uh, as a special treat, if you uh, email us at that address, you can ask for our top 50 lanes report for free. I want to give a shout out to Chris Kaplis's Freight Vine podcast that um, we actually, we cut one of those, as we mentioned earlier this morning. And if you go back, really great catalog of content, um, uh, with some really great guests and we will be back next week, sharing some of, uh, the, the goings on in the market. Have a great week, everyone.